Well, as summer approaches, lots of us will be taking vacations and some may be traveling out of the country. There are possible health risks involved, including a new virus called MERS. And we want to get the latest information from Dr. Scott Ackerman, one of the first coasts leading oncologists. He joins us every Friday to talk about this. And this is something that has been in the news of recent. Um, and, it, and it's not that well known by a lot of people because I was not that familiar with it until we had a chance to talk. What exactly is MERS? Well, this is an, a new virus that has come to our attention. And MERS is an acronym for Middle East Respiratory Syndrome, M-E-R-S, MERS. And the first case in the United States was just found, and that was in Indiana. This is someone who traveled to Saudi Arabia and came back and were exposed in Saudi Arabia. So MERS is a new human virus. It was first reported in uh, Saudi Arabia in 2012, about two years ago. Um, and it's in the coronavirus family. So we call it MERS-CoV. It's the coronavirus family. Coronaviruses, there's lots of them that, that, that are a problem. They cause respiratory problems. But this one is uh, unique and that's very severe. And it's similar to a virus we heard about about 10 years ago, mm -hmm. uh, 10 years ago called SARS. Remember the big right, SARS right, thing? Right, everybody had the masks and whatnot. Exactly. And, you know. So SARS was severe acute respiratory syndrome. Okay. And this is similar to that and is as severe, if not more severe than that. Um, the symptoms include severe upper respiratory illness. It's uh, fever, cough, shortness of breath, those sort of things. So what exactly causes MERS? Where do we, where do we find this? Well, this virus is, is transmitted from person to person, uh, who, people who are in close proximity. But we don't know where it origi originated. We do know that it started in the Arabian Peninsula. It was first discovered in Saudi Arabia. It was originally seen in camels and the dromedary. And so it was in camels and it has switched. It had gone from one species to another, gone from camels to humans. And that's the, the concern. Now it's in humans. It's spreading person to person in people who are in close contact. A lot of viruses start in animals and switch species. The AIDS virus mm -hmm. was originally a uh, simian. It was a, a, a monkey virus. And, it, tra and it, 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 it transformed and went to humans. This one, too, was originally in chemicals. I'm sorry, in camels. Sure. And it's transformed and is now in humans. And there's concern that it could get out of hand. So, you know, with the SARS, you know, there was some people who were concerned about that. I mean, I know predominantly it was over in Asia, but then with MERS, is this something that we should be concerned about here in the United States? I mean, yeah. is this something that, you know, we're going to see people walking around the streets with masks on? Well, not yet. Um, there's only been one case in the United States, and it really represents a very low risk to the public in the United States. But if you're traveling to the Arabian Peninsula, that includes the countries of Saudi Arabia, uh, Jordan, Oman, Qatar, Emirates, Kuwait, if you're in those, if you're traveling to those countries, uh, you should be concerned and you should take appropriate precautions uh, so that you don't get MERS. The CDC, which is who we who we look to as physicians uh, for travel information and for communicable diseases, they don't have a travel ban for the Arabian Peninsula. But I think that it would be prudent for people traveling there to have to, to have precautions. Just like if you're going to Asia ten years ago. You should, have, you should uh, uh, have appropriate precautions for SARS, this time in the Raven Peninsula for MERS. So what are those precautions? What could you be doing to make sure that you protect yourself from potentially contracting this if you're going to be in that part of the country? Well, I think in general, if you're traveling in a foreign country, you should be prepared uh, for the travels and be prepared about being exposed to different viruses and, and bacteria. And so no, no differently in the Arabian Peninsula than if you're going to other parts of Africa or Asia or even Europe or, even Europe or South America. When we travel, we're, we're exposed to viruses and bacteria that are not common in the United States and ones that we ne don't necessarily have immunity, immunity to. Mm -hmm. So if you're planning on traveling overseas, I recommend seeing your physician about four to six weeks prior to traveling uh, to, so you have enough time to get whatever vaccines and medications you might need. The CDC has a wonderful website that's accessible for the public, and so I invite the public to go to that website and plug in where they're traveling to, but also as a portal for healthcare providers as well to help us know how to counsel patients. Uh, there's anti-malaria pills that you might need to take before traveling to certain countries. You can get vaccinated for hepatitis A, you can get vaccinated for typhoid. But in general, you want to protect yourself from mosquito and insect bites. Uh, you want to protect yourself about uh, the, the foods that you eat. You know, we travel to different places. I travel quite a bit for mm -hmm. medical conferences or whatever, and I don't like to drink the water anywhere where I go. Not because it's necessarily bad. You know, m most countries have good 
potable water in the, in, in, in the restaurants and hotels that, that we as, as Westerners go to. But the water, although it's, it's good water, it may have a different bacterial flora in it than we're used to. And it could cause our stomachs to get upset. We can get diarrhea from that. We can get uh, we will lose sleep at night because our stomachs mm -hmm. will be will be grumbling. So I think it's always best to drink bottled water when you travel, uh, to make sure that meat that you that you eat is cooked thoroughly. The way they preserve meat or, 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 or keep meat in foreign countries is different than we do here. The meat meat is kept outside, not necessarily um, refrigerated the same way we have refrigeration techniques here. So make sure meat's cooked thoroughly. Just be careful yeah. when you're traveling. Mosquito bites, water, the food you eat. Yeah, water being the key one. Personal yes. experience, Mexico, won't go further. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks so much. Appreciate it, Dr. You, Ackerman, as always, <laughs> and for sponsoring this segment. And if you would like to ask any questions of Dr. Ackerman, or if you have any questions about any health topic, doesn't necessarily have to be about this one, you can visit his Facebook page, which is facebook.com forward slash First Coast Oncology.